Hey everybody, um, so I want to do a quick lecture about population estimating and um, I have some examples that I'm going to go through and talk a little bit about different ways that you can estimate populations and then um, be on the lookout for an exercise where you're going to um, do a population estimate of your own. So here we go. All right, so why do we need to estimate populations might be a question, and you can probably come up with some ideas of your own, but we really need to know how many individuals are in a population um, because sometimes we might be interested in whether or not populations are increasing or decreasing. So, for example, there may be um, an invasive species and we want to know if its population is increasing through time, or um, there might be a species that we're interested in keeping tabs on, for example, brook trout or largemouth bass or some other species that um, individuals like to hunt or fish for, uh, or we might have a, an endangered species that we wanna to try to keep track of. And so we also may wanna understand whether or not disturbances can cause these changes. So that's another reason we might want to, and we might wanna look at differences in spatial distribution. So there may be an area where a population is doing really well versus an area that a population is not doing very well. And so we wanna be able to sort of estimate the population in these different places and evaluate if some management is needed. Um, so it can be really uh, impossible, at least impractical, impractical, to count all of the, in, the individuals in a population. So we talked about this in the, in the um, earlier, when I did the intro to statistics about a sample and sampling the population and trying to estimate how big the population actually is. And so <clears throat> um, the reasons that we might wanna do this um, and the reason, or the reason that it's impractical or even impossible is that species tend to be mobile uh, or individuals do. They can be somewhat secretive. Uh, their range can be too large. They can be cryptic in coloration, difficult to find, et cetera. So what do we do? How do we estimate populations? Uh, we, we use these mathematical models to estimate populations. And we're gonna talk about, first, we're gonna talk about these capture mark recapture methods. Um, the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Lincoln-Peterson method. There are other methods that, um, that you can use that I don't, I'm not gonna go over today, but there are some other methods for certain um, scenarios. So the Lincoln-Peterson method is a single capture and mark period followed by a single recapture period. And it assumes that the population is closed. In other words, there is no immigration or emigration and there is no recruitment. In other words, individuals cannot leave, they cannot die, and they cannot have babies. Um, so you can imagine sort of the time frame that this may need to take place on is dependent on the species. The estimate, um, in order to estimate the number of individuals uh, in a closed area, and this is the equation that you see on the screen here, and it is n hat, which is the estimate of the population, is equal to n1, which is the number of individuals captured at time one, and marked, plus one, so that's the n1 plus one, then N2 plus two, where N2 is the number of individuals captured at time two. These individuals are not marked, they're just captured, divided by M2, which is the number of individuals that are recaptured, or they're captured and they have marks, so they're captured at time one and marked. And so these are recaptures plus one, okay? So M2 plus one, and then all of this, this um, fraction minus one, all right? So let's get an, have an example. Let's say that you set out to sample a creek in a nearby forest for the rare freshwater Flamox flounder. This species needs a minimum population size of, of 100 individuals per 100 meters of stream to ensure their survival. You measure the 100 meters of stream to, uh, to sample. Your first sample yields 50 individuals, and that's your N1. You mark all of those individuals and return them to the stream. A few days later, you'll return to the stream to complete the second sample. This time you capture 56 individuals, that's your N2, and 37 of those have marks from your previous sample, that's M2. So what is the estimated population and is the rare FFF, the freshwater Flamox flounder, um, is it safe from local extinction? So let's take a look at an Excel example. I did this in Excel just to make it a little easier. And remember that in our first sample, we had 50 individuals, right? The second time we went, and we marked all of those individuals. So we captured them, we marked them, um, and then we went back the second time and we caught 56 individuals. Of those 56, there were 37 that were uh, marked. And so you can see using these different equations that the population estimate is 75 or 75 and a half individuals. 
Okay, so um, we're gonna look at these other components here next, but before we do, I wanna show you um, what it looks like to capture fish uh, in a stream. So this is electro fishing. And you can see these guys, the guy um, carrying the backpack has a battery in it and it electrocutes the water, it sends electric current through the water. It sort of stuns the fish. Um, they, the guy with the net scoops them up, puts them in the bucket with water. The fish are not dead. They are just sort of uh, incapacitated for a period of time. That allows the, uh, the researchers to weigh and measure the fish and then return them to the stream. Okay, so this is going to be what we would do. We go ahead and measure them, capture them, weigh, measure them, mark them, and then put them back in the stream. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's take a look at our, continue back with our example that we were looking at. All right, so, um, all right, so um, we know our population is, um, is what did we say our population was let's take a 75 and a half individuals so it's actually not large enough to stave off local extinction at least in this section of the stream so um we and there's the equation again um so we want to know how accurate our estimate actually is so are we uh, really good at, at this estimate or or um, is there quite a bit of variance around our estimate and how much variance and should we consider um, how much um, confidence we have in, in our estimate and making recommendations based on that estimate? So we need to evaluate the variance around our estimate. And you can see this is the equation for variance. So variance is, um, is designated by, the, by S uh, squared. And then we have N1 plus 1, N2 plus 2, times N2 plus 2, times N1 minus M2, times N2 minus M2. All that divided by M2 plus 1 squared, that um, parenthesis should not be there, times M2 plus 2. And um, so that's the variance. And then the standard deviation is simply um, the square root of the variance. So the variance can then provide us with a confidence limit to our estimate. So we can identify, um, we can say with 95% confidence that our estimate is between an upper and a lower bound. So let's take a look at that in Excel as well. Okay, so using our equation previously, you can see that our variance is 12.75, meaning that our standard deviation is 3.57. Our 95% confidence in an interval is our estimated population, 75 and a half, plus 1.96 times our standard deviation of 3.57, or 82.5 is our upper confidence limit in our interval. And then our lower confidence interval is the same, our estimated population of 75.5 minus 1.96 times 3.57, or 68 and a half. So we can be pretty certain that our, um, in this stream section, that our, our um, freshwater flamox flounder will not make it. All right, let's take a look at some other examples. All right, so I'm gonna have to switch this again. All right, so now let's imagine that um, we have some, or I'm sorry, there are some other methods that you can use, um, capture, mark, recapture methods. There's one called the Schnabel method. And this is where you have multiple capture, mark, recapture events. So you go to the stream multiple times and capture, mark, recapture the, um, the fish. And this assumes, again, a constant population. In other words, no immigration, no emigration, no mortality, no recruitment, or any other factors that might affect the ratio of animals that you've marked versus the total number of individuals that are in the stream section. And then there's the Jolly Seaber method. And this is um, useful because you can use this method for an, uh, an open or closed population. So it allows for some immigration and emigration and or recruitment. And remember that these things are likely to occur during your study anyway. Um, it, immigration and immigration can be, can be um, sort of um, neglected or, or negated um, if you have, for example, a pond system or some closed system. Recruitment, however, depending on the time period uh, and mortality, could, um, could definitely change. So the Jolly Seaver method can be used to overcome those obstacles. And then you also need to consider unequal catchability. You can imagine that um, the um, different size fish, for example, in, in, even within a species, can have different catchability. And it has to do uh, with the 
um, the way that the electrofisher, uh, if you're sampling fish, how effective it is. If you were sampling um, some other type of organism, say you were doing small mammal traps, you might think that um, that us that young individuals might have uh, le have learned less about the world around them, and they may be more catchable. So you have to consider that as well. And so um, often the it is unlikely that individuals are equally catchable. And there, these two methods, the Schnabel and Jolly Sieber methods, allow for estimating catchability. I'm not going to talk about that today. Okay, so now we're going to move into uh, catch per unit effort population estimates. And these are based on the principle of diminishing returns. And basically samples are taken successively without returning any individuals to the um, sample area. And there is usually a dec decrease in the number of individuals with successive samples. And this is the reason it's often termed depletion sampling. Now, when you're sampling in, in this way, this requires equal effort for each sample. So what that means is for your 100 meters of stream that we'd be sam hypothetically sampling, there would be um, a, the same number of people sampling in the same amount of time over the same, uh, same space. And then um, we're going to look at a linear regression method. And remember that the, the um, equation for a linear model is y is equal to uh, mx plus b, or in our example here, bx plus a. So we uh, calculate the equation based on our samples. We need the y-intercept and the slope. And the sample of the population estimate, as you see, is n hat again, is equal to minus a, or negative a, over b. In other words, the slope over, I'm sorry, the intercept over the slope. So let's take a look. Um, well, let's, let's do another um, example before we get into the Excel work. So now we're going to imagine, in contrast to our previous example, that we didn't want to go back to uh, another creek after some period of time. So maybe the, the creek that we are now interested in, sample, sample the creek in a more distant forest for the same rare freshwater flumps flounder. And recall that this species needs a minimum population size of 100 individuals per 100 meters of stream to ensure their survival. So again, we measured out 100 meters of the stream in order to sample it. And our first sample yielded 43 individuals. The second sample yielded 31. And then our third sample, we captured 15 individuals. So again, we want to know is what is the population estimate? And then also, is the rare flamux or freshwater flamux flounder safe from local extinction? So let's take a look at our Excel example again. So in this example, you can see that I have sample one, sample two, sample three. And we have some of the previous catches, okay? So in our first catch, we said we captured 43 individuals, right? Now, previously, we had not captured any fish. So our sum of the previous catches is zero, of course. So this, and then you'll see that the sum from our previous catch in our sample two is 43. So it carries from here to here, okay? From our catch to our sum of previous catches. And then in the next catch, the next sample effort, we had we captured 31 individuals, right? So you can see that in our um, sum of previous catches now, we have 74 individuals. And then lastly, in our last capture, uh, last sample period, we captured 15 individuals. You may wonder, because there's not a sum of previous catches number four, why we bothered with this third catch. Um, catch. And the reason really is because we want to make sure that the population is continuing to decrease if it is not decreasing, then we will likely need to do another sample. All right, so again, we have y is equal to bx plus a. y is equal to bx plus a. And our a, remember, is here. And our b is here. And so now we want to um, evaluate this. So what I want to do is to develop an equation. And I'm going to highlight this area and now that has the sum of the previous catches and the catch and then I'm going to go to insert and a scatter plot I'm going to move this over a little bit and you'll see that I have these um, points and then I want to select that I'm going to click on it select all the all of these just by uh, left clicking and then right click on it and then I want to select the data Oh, I've already done that, sorry. Select, I don't have to select the data. Right click on it and then I want to add the trend line and you'll see on the far right of my screen, I want to display the equation on the chart. Okay, and so the equation then is 
y is equal to negative 0.3722, okay, and recall that that is our b, so I'm going to put that right here, negative 0 0.3722, and um, the equation is that times x plus 44.182. So for A, I'm going to put 44.182. And you'll see now that our estimated population of individuals in this second stream is 118.7 individuals, so 119 individuals. And this stream um, is, um, is in better shape than our previous stream in terms of the population. It looks like we probably don't need to worry at this point about the rare freshwater Flamas flounder going extinct. And you may wonder why the fl rare Flamas flounder, uh, freshwater Flamas flounder is not going extinct or not in danger of extinction here versus the other stream. And we could hypothetically imagine that since the previous stream was close enough that we could make multiple trips, maybe it's closer to um, urbanization and has impacts from, from uh, runoff from agricultural facilities or um, urbanized landscapes. Whereas the stream that we traveled far to, and we wanted, only wanted to be there for a day, maybe it has a, um, a much more pristine, so to speak, um, surrounding forested area. So that's population estimates. Be on the lookout for a follow-up assignment where you're going to do your own estimation of populations. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this, and I'll see you here again soon.